Guys, this is an incredible experience to be able to drive something of such um has such like a like a history, like such a past. What's going on guys? Welcome back to yet another video. Mike from Slow Speed. Today is gonna to be a quick BMW video for you guys because I've been on a prowl hunting looking for uh, the next car for the channel. And I, I have a few ideas, but this one I'm a little excited about. You guys take a look right here. It's the E36 1997 BMW M3. Now, right off the bat, as you can tell, it has four doors. Not like the coupe that I wanted. It is a little smaller. This is like the three series of 1997, which will be like a freaking Corolla size these days. To take a look at it, the car is pretty clean. Uh, shout out to the guy, I think his name's Kevin. Uh, he let me take the car off like a quick second. So I figured why not seize the opportunity and grab some footage and uh, get you guys opinion on whether or not this should be the next car for the channel. Right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, uh, I have a lot of plans if I do pick something like this up. Uh, the 435 isn't going anywhere. I just kinda wanna add this on to the channel and you know, kinda enjoy a lot of other BMW platforms as well as, you know, my 435. So this should be a blast, naturally aspirated, no turbo. I drove it here, it's a, a lot different. It's a lot different, it's a lot slower. But, um, but what can you expect? Now I do not know the specs on this car. I'm um, just like literally, taking it for a spin, letting you guys know what I think, and then waiting for you guys' comments to see what do you guys think, should I do this? And you guys know me, you guys know me. It ain't gonna stay stock. Now, it looks pretty freaking clean, if I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, it may stay stock, like, visually, I don't know. I can't see myself going overboard with this car, but, you know, turbo kits are not that much money. I looked at a few. Don't roast me. I don't know how to open this hood. Okay. I looked at a few, and I'm telling you, this right here is the cleanest example that I found in like the New York, New Jersey, whatever area. This right here is super clean. It's unmolested. Yo, one of the best things about these cars is the fact that they are unmolested. Now you have a few upgrades here that he spoke to me about, like this, and you know, but for the most part, it even has a stock. Air box, no tuner, tuner, ricey ram air intake. And it's pretty clean. Rust is to a minimal. One thing that I noticed, this right here is from factory. This front lip, it looks nice. It's about all you need in a car like this. Uh, it looks like upgraded uh, headlights. Now you see, like I said, got a little uh, rust right here. And he pointed out to me some down here by the door. But other than that, look at, suspend. it even sits nice, you know? has such a timeless, timeless, timeless design, man. You just don't get any better than this, E36. <laughs> One thing that's a little funky though, the mirrors. I know it's a little difficult. Ugh. Now getting in the car is uh, proving a little difficult because it's not as, not as exactly, you know, a huge car. Roll the window back up. We're gonna take it back to the shop. Uh, 
One thing I found that's very interesting, these buttons down here, all the pixels work, the aircon works. This is insane. This is a very neat car. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slap it back and drive. Fortunately, it's not a manual, but like I said, if I purchase something like this, I have plans. Oh boy, I have plans. It's amazing how small things were back in the day, I will admit. Like, the steering wheel feels a tad bit smaller. The gauge cluster is a lot smaller. Uh, the infotainment, everything is really bu uh, boxed in. It's kind of crazy, you know? Take our 3 Series and our 4 Series these days and categorize those as, like, uh, I guess, compact or whatever the case may be. But in all reality, sheesh, just about 10 years before, those cars were huge, freaking huge. We're gonna go ahead and punch it off the thing. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. All right, this thing is no slouch. This thing is no slouch. You got that torque off the line. Wasn't expecting that. Now, let's be honest. I'm not pushing the car 10 tenths, you know, and I'm not, you know, but I'm not babying the car as well. I'm an adult and I'm not just gonna sit there and thrash somebody's car. I tend not to do that to other people's car, believe it or not. Uh, but they had some get up off the line for something with 207,000 miles I, I would be super scared to push something like this. It's insane The cornering is pretty good too. Look at that I like it cuz like it the steering is so responsive Now, now, I do feel a little body roll, but I guess that's to be expected. Uh, this car, wow. Wow. I think that everyone needs to experience like every chassis style of an M3. You know, not just because it's the greatest car known to man, but just to get a feel of what the standards were or what people expected out of like the ultimate driving machine uh, from the E30 to the F80. I've driven a bunch of cars. Um, old and new one car that always surprises me are, are, are these um are these these e-chassis bmw m3s you know i've driven a e46 which you know doesn't feel as exciting uh down low this feels like it's a little bit more torquey down low uh but when you get that thing up top there's just nothing like it you know as opposed to this s52 motor it feels a little more torquey down low and kind of balanced up top so i'm going to go ahead and get this lane right here yeah by the way this car is for sale guys it is for sale you can find it on facebook marketplace but don't look for it because i think i might pick it up oh, this thing is just beautiful but look at the mirrors yo the mirrors are so weird because it's just i don't know it's just ugh. and many of you guys know i hate driving people's cars uh, especially people that I just meet because I don't want to wreck anything. Now, this isn't exactly too expensive. So if anything happens, I'm pretty sure my insurance won't catch a heartbreak. But uh, like I won't I won't drive anyone's like Porsche or stuff like that. I, I thought about it, it'll be great for the channel and everything like that, but I don't have as much financial responsibility to pay for somebody else's Porsche. You know, that's kind of like my dream car. So, you know, I kind of lean on, I kind of, you know, dance on that white line of should I do it or should I not? And uh, yeah, as far as really expensive cars, I'm not going to drive it. But like I said, something like this is for sale. The owner does not mind parting with it. And I can handle the bill if something happens. So, pretty good. Oh, you asked for one more? You asked for one more? Floor. Oh. Okay. Let off. Yo, that was the most exciting 50 to 60. I feel like I was going a lot faster, but I wasn't. Oh my God, this thing feels pretty good. Automatic, I wasn't expecting to enjoy an automatic M3, you know. The automatic transmissions back in the day, despite whether you had power mode and your Lexus or Toyota, or, you know, sports mode in this car, it really wasn't nothing to enjoy in my opinion. You know, if typically in the manuals, you got an extra gear and, uh, and just that driver enjoyment, but this thing is pretty, pretty exciting to drive, I will be honest off the line it just feels so it just i don't know you know maybe i'm expecting it to be a lot slower than i think it, it, it should be uh maybe that's why i think it's pretty quick but i don't know i don't know this feels nice it has guts it has balls <laughs> it has balls <laughs>
Oh man, I don't know. I'm interested in it, guys. I think I might pick this car up. I really do. I really do. And I think you guys will enjoy it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Do you guys want to older BMW on the channel? Now, this is not the last car that I'm ever going to get. I still have dreams to get a Porsche. I, I, if I get this car, I think I found the replacement for the BMW uh, 435, which you guys are going to be probably, you probably guys are going to probably hate me. Uh, I've been contemplating a bunch of things, you know. Should I get the new M4 when it comes out? Uh, a bunch of different things. Do I go straight? Okay, yeah. You know, should I should I try to get the Porsche 2017? Should I get the new M4 when it comes out? Should I get a car that's BMW that's kind of already out that might change the game a little bit? Or, you know, should I go back to the old school, bro? It's like, I don't know what I want to do, but this, I think, is pretty much a safe buy because I can hold on to something like this. The value doesn't really drop. You know, if anything, I might lose a couple thousand or I might lose a couple thousand or might even gain a couple thousand. But at the same time, I get to enjoy something, make content and, you know, spread the word out there that you don't need to break the bank in order to have fun. You can have fun right out of the box. 1997 M3. Now, you're going to get gapped by everybody. Let's be honest. But. I think you'll have fun looking at everybody's taillights in this car for some reason. Oh, bro kill. Oh, it got him good too. All right, guys. Well, car's going back. And uh, yeah, that concludes my short uh, review of this car. And should I purchase or shouldn't I purchase it? I hope to get all the other cars on the channel that I'm really looking forward to. You know, um, do a little review on those. Let you guys let you guys know how it is, so you guys can let me know what you think I should do as far as uh, the next move for the channel. This is pretty exciting. And this freaking turn stock signal thing—it's all the way down low. Very weird. <sighs> I gotta figure out where to make a U-turn at now. BMW M3. It's legit. This close to buying it. There's only one issue, actually. So right off the bat on the windy roads, you kind of feel the car, you know, it's not really as dated as you would think it is. I wish I had like a mount or tripod set up. It doesn't feel as dated as you would think, you know? The steering is a little loose. Whoa, and we have radar. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna go ahead and slap that sucker. And sports mode, just to see what the automatic trans has to offer. Now, if I purchase something like this, I think manual swapping it will like a hundred percent happen. However, like I said, uh, we will see. And uh, I'm gonna leave traction and all that stuff on. Doubt, uh, doubt I'll spin the tire, lose grip or anything. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and um, see what she's got. It just feels so weird because of the naturally aspirated. I haven't really driven a naturally aspirated car in a long, long time. The signal stock is like way down below. So you gotta kinda uh, then muscle your way over in this little, this little tank. This thing is a tank. It really is a freaking tank. Very small, I can barely fit in this car. I'm like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, barely fitting it. Maybe the coupes are a little bit better. I'm gonna give her some juice so we can merge over. Signal. All right. Yeah, uh, we ain't gonna make it, guys. I need to let it. I need to give me some space. We ain't gonna make it. We are gonna get eaten alive in this stock E36. There we go. We think we found our time to shine. All right. Whoa! It actually had a little buck to it. I actually had a little, let's give it, let's stretch it out a little bit on this trip. Okay. You could feel everything that's happening through the wheel. I think it feels pretty good, actually. 
uh, given it being a 207 mile, 207,000 mile car, 1997. Uh, this car is pretty. I like it though. I like it though. This may, this may be a buy, guys. This may be a buy. 